Welcome back to the workshop. Last year when I launched this channel, I did a video on the tea chest. It was just a small little video about the secret features inside. I wanted to expand on that video and talk more about the construction of the tea chest and some of the art storage that I use it for. And so uh, we'll work on that next. The tea chest is based on the plans by Michael Pekovich in his book, The Why and How of Woodworking. It's actually featured in the book, uh, his version, which has knobs, as you can tell. Uh, mine does not have knobs. I, had, uh, I decided to alter it a little bit. But it's tradition. It's actually his designs that I went and made this box on. Now, what happens in the bottom drawer, that is my own creation. And I'll show you what happens down there as we get to it. Um, it is constructed primarily of poplar wood. I think his is made of oak, but oak is a little too, too expensive for my taste. So uh, I went with poplar. I had a lot of poplar. Some of this poplar is actually left over from the apothecary, if you remember that video. That was the 2019 project. This was the 2020 project. And so um, it's got dovetails throughout. Um, the back, the back of this is actually a sort of a floating back. This is the first time I've ever done a floating back. And so this, I believe, is actually plywood. It's probably a quarter inch or half inch plywood. And I did that because it's on the back end and it's not seen. And so it was easier for me to do that with birch plywood than to waste a piece of the poplar. And because this was a sort of a scrap project, there may not have been enough anyway. I'll come back around. The sliding panel, uh, which actually comes out, and so it's got uh, a little rabbit down at the bottom and a much larger rabbit on top, and that corresponds with a guide rail on the bottom and a groove in the top. And so, and it features what I would call a um, a basic Kamiko pattern, uh, and this his in the book had a full Kamiko where you have the extra pieces that come out. That required a lot of extra know-how, um, and I'm not against doing that, but this was my first Kamiko pattern ever, so <laughs> I wasn't about to try to go all the way. Uh, for me, just getting it to this was amazing and uh, very fun to do, and uh, and because it's removable, I can always make a new one, make a new panel, put that in if I want to, and um, it works very well that way. And so it just fits back up in top, lowers down, and fits in place. Now, um, behind, I guess before I put that back in, I should say, we have a shelf here, and the shelf, of course, has the groove for holding the Kamiko panel. That is also sort of, it's not floating, uh, but it doesn't come all the way out to the front. And that's one of the first ones of those I had ever done. Um, I'd done a couple others, mainly in things like the Apothecary, which is stained so dark you can't even tell what's going on. Uh, this was stained, or was not stained at all. It's uh, coated with a, um, a shellac, just a basic shellac. Um, there is an inner carcass inside. Now, I did that a little differently than uh, Michael had suggested. Uh, for me, this is, uh, I think this is a piece of pine or poplar. The surrounding carcass is actually made of uh, quarter-inch birch, birch plywood. Again, scrap material that I had. But because it's back in there, you can't really see it. You're looking at this piece, maybe, but when you've got that sliding panel, you're really not paying attention to what's going on. And so uh, I use that to my favor. Now, with the panel put in, of course, you can only access one side at a time. 
Now, uh, Michael used his for tea accoutrements. Uh, I use mine for um, art supplies. Uh, mainly painting, but I have some other things in here as well. And when I did the video before, a lot of that stuff wasn't in there. So I'll go over that uh, for you painting enthusiasts and art people. Pull out the top drawer. These are just acrylic paints. And I should add uh, that the measurement or the dimensions of each of the drawers, all the drawers, were done based on the size of the paint that I need to put in. So I think my uh, tea chest is slightly larger than the one that he had, uh, that he has in the book. And that's the thing that you have to do when you're building something, you see some plans, you have to modify them to your needs for the project that you're doing. And so, uh, because as we remember, uh, except for some of the puzzle boxes I do, everything has a practical purpose. So again, these are Windsor Newton, uh, acrylic paints and I've got uh, some other stuff in there as well. This is primarily for my uh, just acrylic painting on my own. Same thing with this drawer and these are the paint tubes that decided the uh, dimensions of the whole of all four of the um, of the drawers. The drawers uh, themselves get the paint out. They are made with dovetails all the way around, including on the back. Back panel is made of poplar uh, and the bottom. Now, slide the panel. The drawers on this side have more to do with uh, instructional videos or lessons that I uh, watch and do. Uh, the top drawer, these are paintings that I've, had, that I've gotten for working with Bob Ross. Now Bob Ross works in oils, I only work in acrylics, watercolor or gouache. So when I'm following after Bob Ross, I'm using acrylics. And so things like Van Dyke Red, Indian Yellow, you may have remembered some of those colors, uh, Prussian Blue, things like that. I keep those in this drawer uh, for use with watching his TV show. And then the bottom drawer, this is stuff that I use with Matthew Palmer, uh, who's a watercolor instructor on TV uh, or on the internet. Uh, now this tool, this is where we come back to woodworking. This is just an old pair of pliers, but I use these for actually removing, uh, sometimes these things get a little tough to get off. Uh, as many people know, and so I actually use the pliers to open them up, and so that's what this is for. It's a better use of these in here than out here in the workshop. So um, for the Matthew Palmer, it's, it's primarily going to be watercolor paints uh, that I bought from a big box store. Uh, he does like to use a card or something for scraping the canvas uh, or the paper. Um, I also have things like, he likes to use a craft knife or a scalpel uh, for scraping the paper. It gives a good effect of uh, splashing water uh, or uh, light in the water if you're near the shore, that sort of thing. Um, he's also one that likes to wrap a coin into a piece of uh, kitchen paper. Um, and so I have coins in here, there's a coin, uh, for uh, being either the sun or the moon, depending on the time of day the painting is being done. And of course, uh, wrapping up a coin in a paper towel uh, and working it, twisting it into the surface of the paint really worked out for, for making that, um, that piece. And so that one is just for working with uh, some of that. And of course, when I do watercolor on my own, I will use that drawer for that as well. Now, in order to access the bottom of the panel, you see there's no knob, and this does not just slide out on its own. It's, it, there's no way to get to it. So what I do is I pull out this drawer, I reach back inside, and there's a button. And the button releases the drawer. You can see there's a button. So, down here I have Art supplies, Hanayama puzzles, more art supplies, 
and some secret stuff. I'll show you what that is in a minute. So we have paints. This is actually uh, additional sort of ex extra paint for when other tubes run out. Uh, I have several different brushes, small craft brushes, uh, primarily for small paintings or colorings that I do. Um, a lot of markers. I, I'm not a marker person, but I got these as a gift, and I had so I had to have somewhere to put them. So that is where they go. Uh, I do use them occasionally, uh, and then there's just a few colored pencils. Most of my colored pencils I keep elsewhere. Uh, on the other side, we have more watercolor paint right over there. For you puzzlers, uh, I keep some puzzles here. Because of, uh, this is so easy to get into as opposed to the apothecary, uh, whatever puzzles I'm working on at the moment, I'll keep in here. I have a um, cast flag for those who do Hanayama. Uh, and we have slider. And the one that I've been working on since August, Labby. I think, I've, I think I have featured Labby before in a video, maybe a month or two ago. It's still not finished. Okay, moving on. So, we have in the back, we have a little hidden area, a key. We have a key here, or a tool that's necessary to get into that. So, reach in, and probably everything will spill out. Come on. Box. There we go. Donut. Cannon, for those of you who know what this is. Cannon, fun little puzzle. Make sure I don't drop it on the floor. I have things in here such a way that I can fit four puzzles into it. I have to... There's the maglet. Don't need it solving on my video. Marble. Spoiler alert, here's marble. Now, way in the back, and it's already sold itself, but how long it's been since I've been in here. Way in the back, there's actually a secret compartment. And so there's a uh, you see, I can, this is a hard one to show, but coil, coil is kept back there. It's, when I built this, of course, this doesn't come off, but um, there's a block here that holds the button, the spring, and things like that in place, and there's a little nook in the back, and it was just big enough that I could stick coil into it. There's the hole. And so imagine that's about as much room as I had back there. And so I wanted to have a secret compartment in addition to this whole compartment. So that's kind of where that was kept. And so otherwise, uh, it's just some pieces and parts. And then there's that sliding panel, which is very similar to a sliding panel that I put in the chest of drawers, which is down here. If you have seen the video for the set of drawers, that also employs a sliding device that allows you to access a secret area behind. And so I like to put things like that into uh, some of my different um, projects. Uh, there are the specific puzzle cabinet projects like the Apothecary and the Parthenon. And then there are more practical projects that I do such as the set of drawers or this tea chest uh, that um, employ, you know, is used for storage of a particular material, whether it be art supplies or woodworking supplies, but then also has some uh, special features or some puzzle components in it that I like to include. An added feature that I added to the uh, tea chest was adding a painting on the underside of each of the drawers that would make a painting in the end, sort of a painting puzzle.
It's uh, Cunningham Falls, which is in western North Carolina. Uh, and we visited it back at that time. And if you've been to Cunningham Falls, you know you stand and you look right at the falls as they're going down by you. And so that was done in acrylic paint. And that is my tea chest redone.